In this video, we're going to consider the same problem that we've been considering over the past few videos of atoms interacting with thermal radiation. However, this time we're going to uh, mimic Einstein's treatment from 1917, uh, though slightly adapted because uh, Einstein had intuitively expected spontaneous emission and absorption processes in this interaction whereas uh, our treatment with time-dependent perturbation theory uh, only predicted uh, absorption and stimulated emission. So we're going to mimic Einstein's treatment, but this time supposing that we have absorption and stimulated emission, and we'll see that we have to insert the process of spontaneous emission uh, to be able to um, reach the conditions necessary for thermal equilibrium between a group of atoms and thermal radiation. Okay, so for this, we're going to consider uh, just a two-state system. It has some excited state ket A and some st uh, ground state ket, uh, sorry, ground state ket A, excited state ket B. The energy difference between them will denote by H bar omega A. And we're going to consider a group of atoms of which we'll say N, B are in the excited state and N, A are in the ground state. So we can say this has energy E, B and this state has energy E, A. Okay. And we're going to put this two level system in the presence of thermal radiation. With energy density U omega. In looking for the conditions in which uh, this two state system can reach thermal equilibrium with uh, thermal radiation. We can try sticking to our two known processes, absorption and stimulated emission, and we'll find that uh, there's no conditions under which we can reach thermal equilibrium. We'll actually have to uh, add a third process that's known as spontaneous emission. And uh, we'll see that we'll actually be able to uh, come up with an expression for the rate of spontaneous emission. We're assuming absorption, stimulated emission, and we're going to postulate a third process spontaneous emission. As has been mentioned before, this is a bit of an odd process because uh, we're going in between two stationary states. So you wouldn't expect uh, a system in the excited state to ever decay in the absence of a perturbation or an absence of some coupling. Uh, ultimately, the mechanism of spontaneous emission is due to uh, vacuum fluctuations. Uh, so you can think of spontaneous emission as stimulated emission due to the vacuum, due to the system being coupled to the vacuum. Um, in any case, uh, if we make a little table of the process and the rate of that process, so we have absorption and this will have uh, some rate BAB following Einstein's convention. It depends on the energy density of thermal radiation. So the more photons you have, the more absorption you expect. And it depends on the number of atoms in the ground state. So the number of atoms that can absorb energy at time T 
this is again uh, intuitive because the more items you have in A, the faster you expect the rate. For stimulated emission, we have a rate B, B, A. It's again a function of the energy density because it's the perturbation that's stimulating this emission. And it now depends on the number of atoms that can undergo this process. The number of atoms that are in the excited state that can emit and go to the ground state. And for spontaneous emission, this is a process that's completely independent of the thermal radiation. So this will just have some rate A times the number of atoms that can undergo this process. And our job here is to determine these uh, quantities, BAB, BBA, and A, by looking at um, this system in thermal equilibrium. Right. And the condition for that, so for the populations of atoms in A and B, to be in thermal equilibrium with the radiation, we're going to need that the rate of change of the number of atoms in A is zero and the rate of change of the number of atoms in B is equal to zero. And uh, we'll begin looking at this uh, more in detail in the next video.